Hello everybody and welcome back. It is Jeff again and coming to you from the Minecraft server and as I promised we're going to do something different today than work on the Guardian Temple because I've done that for a few rounds now. I'm going to turn this damn thing off. Ugh. I figured, so I spent a lot of time doing a lot of research trying to figure out a different method of item sorting and I found out a couple random things in my my looking. I was going to set up something similar to Seth Bling's original item sorter, but instead of using a dropper tower, I was going to set it up with one of those cool water elevators, just because I think it's cool and something different to do, instead of the whole dropper system that sends items up through everything. But what I've discovered is I'm either very dumb, which is a possibility, or that they've changed the way that the system works. I tried to rebuild that system just with a row of chests going straight up and down with hoppers going into the back sides of the chest from the top down and filling those chests with certain items. What I've noticed is the hoppers just seem to constantly go down. They prioritize down over being going into the chest. And I knew this was the case. However, people still claim the Seth Bling's design works in 1.8. Strangely, I downloaded somebody's world of building Seth Bling's machine, his item sorter, exactly as it was like updated by JL. Um, I downloaded a world where it had that, and it actually worked perfectly fine, and I could not figure out what I was doing wrong. Therefore, I gave up. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, I gave up. And what I've decided is that I think I'm going to go with this system as my item sorting system and just make it extend kind of all the way back to a whoops to a certain length back in the back of my base and then kind of across the back wall and maybe even again over on the side and have this complete back area literally just be a storage solution room i don't know how that's going to look i don't know if it's going to be the way i'm going to finish it but what i'm going to do today is assuming this is how i have my chest starting to get set up right here so therefore the wall would be yeah right here is the wall that i would extend on it would be perfect because i could have them kind of in the wall start the bait the barrier right here put some stair blocks or something to make sure the chest could still open and have it go here and i'm just gonna start building out this direction now to do this it's gonna take a decent amount of digging i don't know exactly how big i want it to be but i want it to be relatively big so I'm gonna be digging in this episode just to make the frame and structure for this item sorting machine to actually get put into place and kind of square out this room and make it look all pretty and all that fun stuff and bring you guys along for the journey of breaking the room out now do I ever start an episode where all I'm doing is digging and I just sit there and I'm like, I'm digging a block, I'm digging a block, I'm digging a block. Hey guys, I'm digging a block, I'm digging a block. I've never done that yet, but let's start doing that. That's what this episode's going to be. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I always have some type of interesting story I can talk to you guys about. And today's not really a story, but today's kind of like a, a confusing type of rant. So, Julie and I, we like to watch the TV show Shark Tank. I don't know if you guys watch Shark Tank. If not, you should. It's great. It's awesome. Entrepreneurs for the win. I should block this off for sure. I'm going to block it off just like this. I don't want things sneaking in on me, and I got to get this floor leveled off anyway so that I can build this properly. So, we like to watch Shark Tank. It's cool. It gives you the idea that you're going to become an entrepreneur yourself. You're going to come up with this great idea and get rich. That is my plan. Not really. I would love to. Um, but I think the show is so entertaining to watch. For those who don't know what Shark Tank is, Shark Tank has a bunch of multimillionaires that are on the show that offer up the possibility of a deal for the rights investment option. So people... 
like inventors, business owners, etc. They go on the show with a dollar amount of money that they want for a percentage equity in their company that they are willing to give up. And they go pitch their idea to the sharks. And the sharks determine whether they want to invest in said idea and how much help they're actually going to give you into uh, the idea. Like sometimes it's, you got people on there like Mark Cuban who owns the Dallas Mavericks. Uh, you've got um, Damon, oh crap, I can't remember his name. A guy named Damon, he's the guy who does, uh, started FUBU. You got, Lori is a, you know, QVC exec, or not executive, a QVC, like, spokesman. She's, like, rich with many, many products. You got Barbara. Um, I don't know exactly what got her started in Famous, actually, off the top of my head. You got Kevin O'Leary, who is Mr. Wonderful. Kevin O'Leary is the guy who always rips people apart for having, like, bad ideas or for asking for, you know, too much equity. Some people come in there with, like, we have sales of $10,000, but we're going to value our company at $38 million and expect you guys to do it. And he, like, eviscerates people for doing things like that. But he is, like, the king of trying to make licensing deals with people. He's like, I will pay you the $75,000 you are asking for, but in exchange, I don't want any percent equity in your company, but I want, you know, $1 for every product that you sell, basically, for the rest of your life and all this stuff. Like, he makes these off-the-wall deals. Most of them are really, really bad for the entrepreneur, but... Some of them are actually pretty good. He, he he's a he's he's smart. That man is a smart man. There's no question about that. A lot of people hate him because he's such like an asshole, but he's a very smart man when it comes to doing things. So either way, we've been watching a lot of Shark Tank the last couple of years. It's a great show. It's very entertaining. I'll take that for what it is, kind of like an entertainment show. I really don't expect to be able to get rich off of something like a Shark Tank. But lately, we have been getting extremely upset not with shark tank itself not with the sharks not so, sometimes with the entrepreneurs but because of patents so you'll have many people that come into the show with this idea that you will look at and it's ridiculous on the outside but then they start talking about it, and all of a sudden their sales are like through the roof. I think yesterday's show had some dudes who make some dog treat out of yak's milk from Nepal. And they're all like, what kind of stupid business is this? How much sales do you have? And they're like, last year we did $5.6 million in sales. And you're just like, whoa, you're like blown away. By this, and of course, that gets the sharks extremely interested. They never actually want to, I can't say never, very rarely do they invest in an idea. And let me make sure this is right, pick yeah, it is. They'll invest in something that pretty much, and this kind of gets upsetting after a while. They'll be like, yeah, you have this great idea, this multi million dollar idea. I love it. However, you're not making enough money for me yet to want to come in, so therefore I'm not going to come in. Um, they, they're really, a, a lot of times they will just solely invest in things that are pretty much surefire. If you sign the paperwork, you already just made yourself like a cool mill or something like that. I mean, not always, but, you know, very often that ends up being the case. But these people, this one guy came in, and this is what started our our randomness and confusion about this. This guy came in who literally was selling a mail order. It was a subscription program for dog owners in the city. If you're a dog owner in a city and you want to, you don't have a big enough, you can't take your dog out all the time, but you have like a balcony or even inside, you can purchase from this guy actually for a, re a relatively cool way he did it, but basically mails you sod like a two by two square of sod you can get different sizes but the one he was showing off it was like a two by two square of sod to make it all natural like to you know you can do the pee pads for dogs but he was actually selling them real grass and it lasts for about two weeks you throw it away and a new one comes to your doorstep and the dog can go on your balcony but thinking he's going like in the natural habitat of you know pooping in the yard or whatever he actually had a decent amount of sales too because you know let's face it dog owners in the city they're pretentious they 
are foo-foo type people who are willing to spend all this money. So the guy took advantage of a great idea. I get it. The funny thing is they said, they looked at him and said, but the thing is, you know, and one, one of the questions they always ask is they're like, what's proprietary about your product? What is stopping somebody else from being able to just go in and be like, hey, I'm going to do the exact same thing because, you know, this guy did it. Why Why shouldn't I be able to do it? Because, you know, it's selling grass to people. And his response is, oh, I have a patent. Julie and I looked at each other for a second and were like, how the hell do you have a patent on sod? It already exists. It's something that's already out there. But he somehow got the patent on the square of sod that you can mail to people. He said that there was a competitor that came into his space who is infringing on his patent. So what's he doing? He's suing him because somehow he was able to score a patent on sod. I think that's off the wall. Julia thinks it's off the wall. We think there's somebody like crazy working at the patent office right now. Oh no, is this the end? This is as far back as my base can go. I'll have to keep that in mind. Somebody working at the patent office allowed for a patent on a square of grass that already exists. Where do you think he gets the sod from? A sod farm. But somehow... He's got the patent, which is just crazy. So, okay. I don't know enough about patents to know exactly how they work, what you have to define, how strict a patent is. Because, like, if a sod company decides to start doing, well, you don't have to come to our farm to pick up the sod, we'll mail you sod. Is that infringing on this dude's patent? I, I have absolutely no idea. So we don't know how that stuff works, but that baffled us. That, however, was not as bad as the one that aired sometime this week. We watched it yesterday. It just took the cake, and we... And Julia was, like, physically angry at this next one. This lady has her invention is to promote healthy eating for children. That kids don't like to eat food that's good for them. This is her premise, which her premise is completely off base on what her product is completely, and especially with the demonstration that she made for it. She says, and she's, she's absolutely right when she says this, kids, like there's been proven studies, that children are much more likely to eat items that they wouldn't normally eat if they're given the opportunity to play with their food. Play with your food, you have fun, you know, you do something like that's something, yeah, you let kids play, you can get away with do that. I mean, that's why people do the little airplane thing. Oh, little baby doesn't want to eat the eat the baby food because they're just trying to feed a baby food. Wah, wah, no, 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 no. Yeah, of course, that's the baby talking. No, 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 don't want the baby food. Wah, wah. That's how babies talk. Um, so people, what do they do? They say, here comes the airplane. Vroom, vroom, vroom. And the kid's like, hee, hee, yay, airplane, airplane. And opens his mouth and, you know, eats the baby food. Yeah, this is, you know, something that people have, you know, naturally understood for a long time. So she's not wrong in her concept. So she said, I started realizing that I, if I cut my food, like healthy food up for my kids in these funny little shapes, they would be more likely to eat it because they get to play with it. A little different shapes. It's cooler. It's not just the same food anymore. So therefore, her invention was born. I believe it's called Food Bites, um, if you want to look it up. And Food Bites is basically a little contraption that little kids can use and it's something that allows you to be able to easily cut up like soft foods um like it's this little like rectangular thing that has all these different shapes in it and you put it on the food and you rock it back and forth and it cuts it into these little fun shapes that the kids now want to eat now the whole premise of this thing is the fact that it gets her kids to eat healthy food as opposed to food that's bad for them 
And she demonstrates this product by not only using it to show how easily it can cut cool shapes into a slice of white bread, but also like a slice of cheese, which are two things that are not good for children. Like just, just straight up carbohydrate white bread. You know, that's not good. So you're, you're basing, you're showing off your product based on a premise that's not even for. Just, you know, admit it. You can, you can try to market it however you want. You're somebody who wants to make money. I get that. I respect that. I don't disrespect the lady for that. But, or, I mean, her premise is wrong. Now, the sharks straight up said, okay, so what is going to stop somebody else from doing the exact same thing? It's, you know, just such a simple concept. And her response, yet again, you guessed it. I have a utility patent on this. And Mark Cuban, thank you for Mark Cuban for being a little bit realistic. He looks at her and goes, on what? Cutting food into shapes? And she says, yes. So I'm baffled at this point. You have a patent on cutting food into shapes. Let's take this. Let's take this just from the beginning here. What else cuts food into shapes? Maybe a cookie cutter? Hasn't that been something that cuts food into shapes for years? Does she now own all cookie cutter patents? Let's go even simpler than that. A knife? A simple everyday knife which is why actually one of the sharks went out he says i'm gonna go out i cannot understand how i could back a product that something as easy as a knife can compete with and he's absolutely right he actually liked the idea and he understood the concept he's like yeah kids you're 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 absolutely right kids like to play with food if they're in fun little shapes they will definitely be more apt to eat it that's absolutely right i was like okay I got to see this patent. So I went online and found the patent for this specific thing. I am not kidding you. I so am confused at how patents work. In this lady's patent, she you have to like specify related patents to your patent. She specified there was at least a hundred patents written directly in her patents that are pretty much identical things to what she patented and somehow still was given the patent one of them was really funny it was really odd i was so confused it was called the fib digit core i was like what the hell is this fib digit it, was, it looked like a bunch of letters that they, somebody just smashed their hand on the keyboard and it was something called the fib digit core f b d g t i or something like that it was some it was off the wall and I actually had to go look up what it was. This patent, it, it looks exactly like an apple core. And I was going to get mad at this patent as well. Um, but it was actually a patent that was filed in 1939. So it was probably like the first one. And I didn't know. A fib digit is actually like a fruit. Um, a specific fruit native to one specific area that I guess, essentially shape-wise at least, I don't know much else about it, is pretty much identical to an apple. And it's, it's an apple core is exactly what this patent is for. So I wonder if the fib digit patent owner now, whoever owns that particular patent, could come after um, an apple core person because it's like the exact same concept and looks identical. I have no idea. But, I mean, this lady had hundred of patents. She has a patent on cutting food into shapes. And even cited all these other patents that do the exact same thing. Yet somehow she still has the patent. I don't get it. Guys, I'm so lost. It made me, it, it kind of, it made me, like, I wasn't furious. I was kind of laughing hysterically. Julia was, she was physically, like, furious. She's like, I am so mad at this show right now. I need to stop watching it. And it's not even the show. It's this lady. And like I said, Mark Cuban even, like, called her out on it. He's like, what, you have a patent on cutting food into shapes? Like, a knife? I mean, it just... I don't know what's going on in the patent office. All I'm trying to think is, 
what can I repatent right now and make millions of dollars off of? Obviously, there's a loophole somewhere there with current people who are working there that they're granting ridiculous patents to people. And who knows? Maybe somebody who watches my videos is actually a patent lawyer and can explain to me. My, my thought process has got to be that she has a utility patent that is so specific. It's going to be something like... A, a device that cuts food into these specific shapes that is specifically like this measurement and has a handle that sticks out like X number of degrees. Like, I would assume her patent has to be so specific to not be already infringing on so many other people's patents. I just bit my tongue. And to so many other people's patents. But at the same time, a dude got patent on sod that he mails to people's houses. So I have no idea... Guys, if you want to do it, let, let's find a patent. I'll, I'll split patent royalties with you. If you guys can give me the idea, I'll do the research. I'll find out how to get something patented. If we can patent some crazy ideas, crazy invention, and then just go after everybody who makes something similar. And we will make money from doing nothing. We'll take an idea that already exists out there that just doesn't have the right patent filed on it. We'll file that patent and then just be like, look, you violate our patent. So now you owe us money. Like, <laughs> I don't know. That would be such a wrong and dickish thing to do. But I mean... Like, come on it's oh i don't even know it's kind of fun to rant and rave about something that i really have absolutely no control over it's so off base and it makes me laugh so hard but wow there's a patent on cutting food into shapes and mailing sod i just it baffles me people well that being said you guys have watched me dig a square, listen to me rant and rave about patents, and take out a couple spiders in the process. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if everything goes right, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Same time as always. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see you next time.